everyone, it's Misty here from Stamp Anything. Welcome back to another video. Before we get into it today, I wanted to share a couple of announcements with you. First, Annabelle has a new Color University class where we're going to learn all about plaid. So gingham, plaid, buffalo plaid, and my favorite, houndstooth. So you can find a direct link to that in the description box down below. Next is the Everything Nice online retreat. So if you've had FOMO like me, when you see pictures of the in-person retreats, um, this will be something similar. It's going to be a private Facebook group. You're going to have two days, the 27th and the 28th of April, um, eight projects. You're going to get all of the, all of the goodies are going to come to your house and you can craft along with um, Stephen, Annie and Kevin. And then there's also going to be a Canadian retreat and all of these things are listed in the description box down below along with links to Stamp Club and Stencil Club. All right, friends, Anne has since released more details about the retreat. So make sure that you are in the Facebook group so you can get all the information in real time. I thought I'd share with you um, a little footage of Roxy as she gets into everything. <laughs> this cat, I swear. Um, I think I've mentioned before that she is very needy lately and she, she has come to believe that she can only sleep on the couch when I'm sitting right beside her and she expects me to do that all day. So today I had um, Rob, you know, bring her in, put her on my desk and let her um, sleep there for a little bit. And she did until I finished this card. So the coloring part was today and the rest of it was later. But she is a plastic eating cat. I'd say that she is pica, but she will chew on anything, anything that's plastic. It's And she'll sniff things to see if they're plastic. So yeah, she's a mess. And then I left this little clip in because you can see her tail over on the right hand side. So yeah. Okay, I am going to share with you an easy way to use and incorporate die cuts into a shaker card. And I'm going to be using the pouches from Stamp Anything, of course. So I am going to be using black for the base of the DeLorean. And then I am using um, gray. I don't this may be smoky slate. I don't remember. And I am using whatever is left of my adhesive sheets. Um, as you guys know, if you saw my very first video of this month's release, um, I mentioned, why didn't I put this on sticker paper? So I remembered this time. I'm sorry that I'm a little bit off frame. Ay, ay, ay. I zoomed in way too far. Normally I just zoom in and you saw the washi tape. I normally zoom in and that's kind of like my, um, guide but I'm telling you that break kind of messed with my brain I feel like I can't craft at all but I'm getting better practicing every day <laughs> so it's uh, a little uh hard sometimes to get the backer sheet off and I'm fiddling with it but I bought these sheets off of Amazon they're just double-sided adhesive sheets um Sizzix makes some I'm sure scrapbook adhesive makes some I don't know. Like I said, I got these off Amazon and I got a lifetime supply. <laughs> so once I get those taped down, I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine and then we're going to get it at, um, put together. So you can put die cuts in a shaker card. You can, but I hate when I like when you do that and then all of the shaker bits get like stuck or they don't flow easily. So I have a really easy way for us to combat that and I'm going to walk you through step by step. So I was having trouble getting the backer sheet off this. The lines are so teeny, teeny, tiny and this went down a little crooked but the one thing about this paper is once it's down, it's down. So I was like, okay, it's just a little crooked. <laughs> it's also going to be in the background. It's not the main focal point of this card but it's one of them. And then I just adhered the kind of um, bumper with uh, what's that called? Tape runner. So for the background, I remember that there was something around the DeLorean when it started going back in time or whatever. And so I pulled up the movie poster and I thought, oh, I can do this. This will be really fun. Well, spoiler alert, it doesn't look quite like that. <laughs> It, it doesn't really look like that, but that's all right. So this is how I store my stencils. This is a six by eight Project Life 
album and then I buy the 6x8 pockets, put a little cardstock in there, and then how I store my stencils. So I believe this is from the Safari stencil set. I don't remember. But any circle will do you. And actually, I, I wish I had done this organically and skipped the circle altogether. So I'm just using the um, Stamp Anything ink pads and I'm just adding ink to my brush and then going around. Um, you could use any ink that you have. I And I... I wasn't looking for a smooth blend. It's supposed to be the night sky or whatever. So I wasn't concerned about that. Um, so I don't mind that, you know, it's a little patchy and stuff like that. Again, not worried about it. Now you'll see me pull out some white paint. Well, that white paint was dry all the way down. <laughs> so, Because I considered like drawing lightning bolts or like adding stars, but I just decided to skip it. Just adding some of the darker blue and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of the black just around the edges. Again, this is not the main focal point. It's the background. Um, so hopefully um, it just kind of blends in as I hope it will. And then once I've done that, I'm going to remove that mask and I'm going to go ahead and add some color in the circle. And this is when I'm like, I really should have just done this organically and I didn't, but that's okay. So once I get this put away, it's time to assemble our card. Now, I encourage you to size your paper four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I feel like that's the perfect size to fitting these pouches. If you go four and a quarter by five and a half, it's going to bow, bow in the middle. So four and an eighth by five and three eighths is the perfect size. So I have cut a piece of acetate to the exact same size and I have put that on top of the um, background. So it goes pouch, acetate, background and I'm just trying to figure out you know get it positioned just right etc and um, then we're going to close up three sides of this I don't know why it took so long it was sized exactly the right size <laughs> this is crafting in real life people crafting in real life so I'm just using my scissors to get the backer sheet off um I don't know why I can't do it with nails, but clearly I can't. Um, these are my own nails, but I was a nail biter until I was like 35 or 36. So sometimes I forget that I have nails that maybe can do some stuff. So I've slowed this to normal time so I can kind of walk you through it. And again, it's really simple. Once you've done it, you'll be fine. And again, this is just because I hate when the shaker bits get caught on whatever background I have. Like, I I don't know why it drives me crazy, but it does. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I did it this way. And I've mentioned before, if you didn't know, I used to be a classroom teacher. I taught in the classroom. And when you get, when you get a new classroom or when you get your own classroom, there are there's a plethora of things that the other teacher had left behind. And one of those things was a box of transparency sheets. Now... I know some of you are like, what is she talking about? <laughs> but back in the day, instead of a smart board or a computer, we had an overhead projector and they used transparency sheets. And so I've cut that down to the exact same size. And here you can see here that I have the pouch, the acetate, and then the um, background. Now you wanna make sure that you put your shaker bits between the pouch and the acetate. And if you don't, then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this. But it's really simple and easy um, once you get the hang of it. And I think it's the, per again, I think this is the perfect way to incorporate die cuts without, you know, your shaker bits going crazy. I probably put too many seed beads, but I wasn't paying attention. <clears throat> These are leftover drills from diamond painting. Um, I use them in my shaker cards and I think they look really, really fun. So now that I have that, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make sure it's as flat as possible. And then I'm going to um, adhere the other flap and this is going to be done. And again, I've kept this in real time so you can kind of see how it works. So it is sticking a little bit, but that's the static of the uh, pouch rather than the die cut behind it. And I'm just going to glue this with liquid glue to a card base because it's the perfect size. And that's going to be it for the card base. And then we're going to move on to Mr. Marty. 
Marty McFly. I love Michael J. Fox. He's such a good actor. Okay, we're going to put that aside. And now I'm going to stamp. You guys know if it's a brand new stamp, I like to rub it on the back of my hand to get rid of the sticky. And then I stamp them twice. Here, True story. Like the one that you're going to see me color, this one was like number 16 or something. <laughs> I... I was having such a hard time. I think it's because I took a break and I like I need to sit down and practice. So but I really do like how this he turned out. Um, I think he turned out really close to the picture because I was using that as a reference. So yeah, I really do like how he turned out. So I color skin using E33 quadruple zero. Um, and then R20 for the cheeks. Uh, every, there, everybody does it a little bit differently, but I believe the kind of stamp anything color theme is E04, E11, and then E00, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I've mentioned before, I, there's just something about that purple and that blue, green, I mean, in that brown. I just, I don't know. I just, it looks weird to me. Now, I have taken, I have been told in the past that I have, um, super side or whatever it's called rather than super taste it's super sight and I can see more colors than other people maybe that's why I don't know but <laughs> I don't know I don't know so yeah once we get him done I'm gonna move on to his hair so I was looking at the picture from the movie there was like three or four of them his hair is like a cool tone brown and in some pictures, it looked almost blonde, but I remember it being brown. So I am using cool tone browns. And I'm just kind of starting at his hairline and flicking. You guys know that's kind of how I do it. Um, I am using all of the cool tone. So E49, 77, 74, 70, I think. <laughs> I will have all of my markers listed down below. But I'm just flicking it up where it goes up and flicking it to the side where it goes to the side. And then the sides on the side, actual sides of his hair, I've just kind of ombre it down. He is so much fun. He was really fun to color once I got into it. I love his puffy vest. Um, so, yeah. And just leaving a highlight at the top, um, but with color. You guys know that I am not one that likes a white highlight. But again, if you like that, then that's fantastic. Everybody has their own coloring style, their coloring preference. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to play. That is my, that is my advice, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> this is a hex chart, and if you don't own one, I suggest you get one. So um, Sandy Allnock has one for Copics, Prisma, and um, Faber-Castell. Faber-Castell, am I saying that correctly? And I love it because it's not in color order. It's what colors are beside each other, kind of close, or you can work out blends. So I, that, I use that to figure out his vest because his vest is really like a burnt orange color, not a Texas burnt orange. It's got a bit more red than that. So I was able to find the ease that I wanted to use. And again, I'll have them listed down below. I think it I think it was 18, 9, 8, mm, something like that. But I'll have it listed down below. So in his um in the movie, he has on a vest, then he has on a like a blue pattern button-down shirt under that and then he has a jacket I don't know if the vest is part of the jacket like I, you can see here I had it all pulled up and his jacket is kind of acid wash but his jeans weren't so I tried to leave a little bit of white on his arm and then I just colored it um uh I just colored it with like I would regularly do normal blue jeans. So I start um, between his legs, <laughs> between his legs, and then um, work my way towards his knee. So I pulled up the picture of his hoverboard, and it's actually pink with green on it. So I used RV09 and RV06. That is my favorite hot pink. 
Now, the shoes are like a silver. So I am using this marker that I picked up from AliExpress eons ago. Um, and then I'm using C0 for his shoes. And then you guys know I always like to bring in a black brush pen to darken his eyes. So to adhere him to the pouch, I'm going to be using tearing tape, also known as score tape. Um, I want a heavy duty adhesive and I don't want to use liquid glue because it will literally get everywhere. So we're going to do that. So once I get it down, I'm going to burnish it with my bone folder that keeps it adhered. And then I'm going to reuse my uh, scissors to remove the backers of the tape. And then I've decided to go ahead and stamp a sentiment. I was on the fence about this because you got, if you don't know, I like to leave my cards without sentiments. That way I can use them for whatever. So I'm going to get this adhered. And once I do that, that's it. That's it. This card is done. So thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. You guys are going to be so floored. When we do previews next week, I am so stinking excited for you to, to see the next release. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a good day, night, weekend, wherever you are. I love your faces, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.